Okay, synchronicity. I think most people know what synchronicity is. Carl Jung defined it as an a-causal principle, but most of us just think of it as a meaningful coincidence. Like maybe the number 11 starts popping up everywhere you go, or you run into someone on the street that you were just thinking about a moment ago. People always respond to these patterns when they happen, which is why I think everyone understands what synchronicity is on some level. Now, according to probability theory, these coincidences will eventually happen and shouldn't be interpreted as a supernatural event. It's just a statistical outcome. And even though this might be true, it hasn't stopped people from having wildly different interpretations of synchronicity. Some people might see the number 11 and go, huh, that's interesting, and then forget about it. But other people might have the same experience, exactly the same event, and say, wow, this is a message from the universe, or it's a confirmation that I'm on the right path or something. And I'm sure you know people who fall into these two camps. Personally, I've taken synchronicity pretty seriously in my life, so here I am to share with you what I've discovered in that time. I want to go over three main points in this video. First, synchronicity is real and must be interpreted by the person who experiences it. This might not be obvious at first, but because there is no accepted scientific explanation for how synchronicities could happen, it forces us to interpret them in our own terms. When I say that synchronicity is real, I just mean that you can ignore it, but that doesn't change the fact that it happened. So Jung has a perfect description of what I'm trying to say here. It's in a letter that he wrote in 1955. He wrote, Funny how few people can draw the inevitable conclusion from causality, being of statistical nature, that it must suffer exceptions. You can arbitrarily dismiss them as indispensable parts of the real world, if you like averages better than random facts. The latter are facts nonetheless, and cannot be treated as non-existent. Synchronicities are always a kind of surprise. They take us by surprise because they defy our expectations of what should be a natural state of affairs. And this makes them kind of like outlying data points in our experience. And you can ignore the data points, that's fine, but they're still there. What really matters is how you interpret the data. It's your method of analysis, and if you change it, then you can make those events meaningful again. Which brings me to my second point. It's possible to take synchronicity seriously. So now I have to put myself out there and tell you about my experience. Uh, it was about 10 years ago, and I was just really starting to get into this kind of stuff, and one night I was reading online about the number 137. Now there's a whole book dedicated to Carl Jung and his colleague Wolfgang Pauli who were obsessed with this number, number 137, which occurs in physics. And I thought this was very interesting, but went to bed, woke up the next day, and I was going to my summer job, and I was being assigned a room number in my uh, university dorm, and of course I was assigned to room number 137 that morning. And at this point, I was forced to interpret the event. Either say, okay, well, that's neat, you know, same number as last night, and then just kind of go on with my life. Or to really take it seriously and not dismiss this event, uh, which I, I did. I said, well, this is a sign that I need to investigate this phenomenon. So here I am. This brings me to number three on my list, and it's more of a definition. Synchronicity is symbolic self-reflection, but it's not good science. Without the self, there is no synchronicity. But this is exactly what science aims to achieve. A good scientist eliminates their self in order to prevent cognitive bias from spoiling the objectivity of their idea. This means that synchronicity is doubly opposed to science. On one hand, how can you have a scientific principle without causality? And on the other, how can you have a scientific principle with the self? So once again, Jung has some advice for us from that same letter. He writes, Since the real man is always an individual and unique event, and as such merely random, you have to label the whole of mankind in its essentials as valueless. But on the other hand, only the individual carries life and consciousness of life, which seems to me rather a significant fact not to be lightly dismissed, at least not by the physician. You can do such things in Nazi Germany or in Russia, but God forbid not with us. 
But wherever a philosophy based upon the sciences prevails, as in the USA, the individual man loses his foothold and becomes vermast, turned into a mass particle, because as an exception, he is valueless, not very different from the Russian. The main insight here, which is really incredible, is that what makes synchronicities exceptional events is intimately connected with what makes each of us exceptional human beings. So this means that when we add the self, we have to abandon causality to some degree. And what Jung is saying is that Western culture is not ready to do this. Our society is still based on a way of thinking that excludes synchronicity and will therefore destroy individuality by making each of us vermast, which means measured. There's a lot of, of recent YouTube videos about this very idea. Here are a couple of my favorites from After School and Academy of Ideas. If you've been down this rabbit hole, you'll already know about this. Uh, but our generation is struggling to self-actualize in a culture that is increasingly focused on efficiency and competition instead of cooperation. Meanwhile, there's this scientific power structure that is really focused more on technology than human well-being. This is where I think synchronicity enters the picture. If we can understand synchronicity, if we can figure out how to interpret it correctly, then we have a chance to discover or rediscover what it means to self-actualize in the 21st century. So that's what my channel will be focused on from here on out. I'll be trying to explore this idea specifically in historical terms to figure out how we got here in Western culture, especially in terms of uh, our scientific development. So thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me and I'll see you next time.